and welcome back to another me cooking something that I have an idea that I'm making it up as I go along. This time I'm taking you with me. We are going to be making some baked pork because they bake everything. So we're using a different kind of dish this time. I think they cook better this way. So yeah, it's going to be some baked pork with veggies all mixed up together. And then we're going to make some rice and add them together. So it should feed a family of four for about under 20 bucks. And we're in my new kitchen compared to all of the videos. This is my new place. We're happy. All right, let's get going. But just to let you know, for the sake of saving time, because I don't think you need to wash and chop things up. Everything's all chopped up already. Let's go. We're not making two sauces. We're basing everything on this sauce. I just use these because the spices and stuff are already mixed to what we like. So this is going to be base of the sauce. So I am going to cook the meat in the bottom of this Pyrex little dish. And um, I'm trying to save the environment so I have this cute little thing here. And it does give you the spray so you put whatever oil you want in there. I think you can get them from the Epicure people. like. You have to pump it up. It brings up the pressure. And, um, let's see if you can see this. It just sprays. Just like the stuff that's not good for the environment. And then we're just doing this so nothing sticks. Because nobody likes to scrub things. Obviously not. So that's where the meat goes. And we're going to make a sauce just for the meat. So this is sprayed. I'm just spraying it first so that I don't forget, because I have a tendency to forget things. And um, sticky stuff is, is not a good thing you want to forget. So let's go with the sauce for the meat. Shake this up real good. I use a blue menu. You can use it if you want. Um, um, so that much of the bottle. And the bottom. And the phone rings. And that is... Some kind of scan thing, I ain't answering the phone. And I don't know how to turn the ringer off. Alright, I did answer just to make it stop ringing. It was some weird automated financial survey thing in the G. I used to work for Numeris, who are pretty much the only people that are technically allowed to do this kind of surveys. Um, but I wasn't answering that. So, my next step is this. Get this at Walmart for like two or three bucks. And it is um, really spicy. So, I'm gonna pour in there, I don't know. Just pour some. That looks good. I don't measure stuff. I don't, there's no point in measuring anything, really. Just don't. And my next one is gluten-free soy sauce. So, I know I'm not supposed to eat soy. Highly processed soy does not bother me in little bits but the poorly refined stuff just gets me really bad so all right you don't need a lot of this stuff put it in there and mustard mustard i have learned is the key to a lot of tasty stuff so and this one's almost empty so all right so i would say that's about like half a teaspoon go about that much then we're gonna move to garlic. I like this kind here that you put in your fridge and it's already chopped up. For the longest time, I actually bought real garlic cloves and um, yeah, I eat that much garlic. But So I really, really like garlic, so I'm gonna put about this much in my spoon. I don't know. Put it in there. Keep the vampires in even though they don't scare me anyway. And uh, mix that up. And now we are going to use this dollar, I think it was a dollar or two dollars from Walmart, little whisk. Mix that up. Sure. I'm looking at the kiss. I'm looking at the consistency of it and I don't think I have enough of this. So, put some more in there. Alright. Yes. Scientific people. This is so scientific. Don't ever say the master chef. Gordon Ramsay would make me cry. <laughs> Alright, so let me show you what the consistency. 
this is the consistency I want to get. All right, so that's one thing, put that aside. All right, this is one of my ways of saving money. Again, I only eat pork and I only eat chicken. I don't like fish and I'm allergic to all the lobster stuff. My dad was a fisherman, I get the irony. Um, but I buy the pork tenderloin and the, the bigger things when it's on sale and then I chop it up to little pieces and freeze it in individual things. That's what I do. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. And um, I usually chop it up into the sizes that I want already. So makes this part of you know, cooking a lot easier. So we have spread it out as evenly as we can on the bottom. And now we're gonna throw this out and we're gonna wash our hands completely so that we don't have any cross contamination because I'm afraid of germs and people should be too. All right, we're here. The rings are gone because we need to clean those after. And we're gonna season the meat. I know I'm gonna put stuff on top of it, but this is what they do on MasterChef, so this is what I'm gonna do too. Uh, this was a pepper mill. It kind of came with the peppercorns in it like four or five years ago. I just kept the container and just buy the peppercorns myself and put them in there. Right. Now we're going to add the onions. You want to cook your onions with your meat because that's a bit of onions. They bring out the flavor in the meat and so does seasoning. That's the whole point of seasoning. And speaking of seasoning. I don't use salt. I just use this. Um, I don't even like the taste of salt. Mostly because I wasn't raised with salt. My mother never cooked with it at all. And um, this just tastes better than salt anyway. So That's on the meat. Now this part. This is parsley flakes. Parsley flakes barely taste like anything. But they're very high in iron. So that's good. However, fresh parsley don't use much because you're going to go overdo it. But we're going to put some of this on there. To give us some extra iron. Why not? It doesn't taste like anything. Trust me. It doesn't make a difference. So now we have that meat in the bottom. We're just going to pour our sauce on top. Alright. So. Sauce is poured, but we want to make sure it goes over everything. Introducing another Dollarama find. Yay! Look, you don't need to go buy fancy schmancy name or anything. Dollarama ones work fine. I'm just coating all the meat with the sauce. I don't know why. I don't know if this makes a difference or not for me, like storing this up, but I'm storing it up. I don't I don't know. And now I'm spreading it out again to make sure that it covers everything. Next, I'm going to put in some green peppers, some fresh green peppers. Why? Because I like them. Do you like them? No, then don't put them in there. Does your family not like them? Then don't put them in there. I just happen to like them. And now I have a fridge that doesn't freeze all my food. So I can actually keep fresh vegetables for longer than a day in my fridge. Because this is where mushrooms come in. I haven't cut the mushrooms yet for a reason. Now this is going to sound a lot strange to a lot of people. Because if anybody out there knows how mushrooms grow, this is going to sound weird. You don't wash a mushroom before you cut it. Because if you wash it, it makes it go bad. I know that sounds really weird. I understand. I know back with the same knife that we cut the onion and the green peppers with. You don't wash it. I know. I can hear a lot of you cringing. I like big chunks of mushrooms, so I cut them about this big. And you put as many in there as you like. So. so, if you happen to be like my mom, and you wash all your fruits and vegetables before you put them away in the fridge, and you're wondering why your mushrooms go bad and turn brown and blech, if in a day, that's because you're washing them. Don't. And, and, science bit, how many of you know that mushrooms are a fungus? Because everybody knows a fungi. 
<laughs> that was a college joke. Seriously, college joke. Um, yeah, because I actually studied environmental science for a while, too. Hey, I did a lot of things. But mushrooms are actually the root. Here, this is important. You see these little things? Brush them off. Don't wash them off. It's not going to hurt you. And like I said, mushrooms are the root. They are the root of a fungi plant called a mycelium. And they usually grow in circles. So if you ever see that you've got a bunch of mushrooms on your front lawn and they tend to grow in a circle, that's just how the root system works. Oh my dear lord, you're learning. <gasps> oh, you scared. All right, so right now we have this. Right now, this is what our bake looks like. The meat is under there. We have onions mixed in with the sauce and the meat and green peppers and mushrooms and all I'm going to do is add some of these frozen veggies. I did take them out of the bag for video purposes. But I mean, I happen to like broccoli and cauliflower. Did I like it as a child? Heck no. I also wouldn't eat tomatoes as a child. You guys wanna know why? Cause it had seeds. They had seeds. Even now I'm not too crazy about really big seeds in tomatoes and I also don't like seeds in bananas so I have issues but we already know that so this is what okay so the big parts almost done all we gotta do now is add a little bit more of this now I have Mediterranean they also have roasted red pepper anything that's a vinaigrette that has the flavors you like go for it shake it up if not you just get the top part and uh, pour, cover the veggies. Oh yeah, okay. So for this recipe, I use about half of this bottle. Considering that this is about $2 usually when they're on sale. Dollar for the sauce, hey, penny for your thoughts, whatever. And we're just gonna cover this with foil. Again, Dollarama kind is fine, I think this one is Walmart brand. Not too sure, so we're gonna cover that up. Oops. We're gonna cover that up with foil and put it in the toaster oven. All right, so we have it in the oven and a lot of toaster ovens that have the double spaces have one that can do this. So I can flip it upside down and bring it lower or I can flip it up. So since this is you know, a glass, I don't want everything to burn on the bottom, so I'm trying to get it away um, enough. But you can look in here and nothing's touching, so there's a lot of room. There's no safety things to worry about. Because again, I'm afraid of fire and afraid of all that kind of stuff. And the irony is, is my biological father was a fire chief for a very long time. So, we're gonna put that in the oven. I am gonna put it at 400 degrees on convection bake for an hour. See, I like this one with the timer thing because I can't leave it there and forget it. Because sometimes I do forget things. Okay, I forget everything. I can't burn my stuff. It won't burn, for, you know. Great idea ever. So what do you think, guys? Do you think I have enough rice? I stocked up when it was cheap. Big thing of jasmine rice. And I love mixing some of this in there too. So, green and yellow split peas, just barely in your rice. There you go. So, there is a little bit of gluten in here with the barley. And again, I can have a little bit of gluten every once in a while, and I'll be okay. So, I usually mix in um, about a quarter cup of this in with my rice. And just to make you guys laugh, so that's my jasmine rice. And that's how much basmati rice I have. So this is the size of my hand. <laughs> I like rice. And, and these are my gluten-free um, rice noodles. But yeah. Hey, stock up when it was cheap. You can never go wrong. Rice isn't going to go bad as long as there's no moisture that comes in. So why not? So let's mix some of this. So this is another little tip trick of mine. I bought a dry erase board and it comes off the wall. It's only stuck there with those uh, command 3D things. 
you squish anyway it doesn't it's not gonna hurt the wall if you take it off so I have my basmati rice my jasmine rice I usually cook everything with broth instead of water it gives it a better taste um I do have iced tea that I make and these are just like my uh, schedules to get anywhere all right so I've mixed in my rice with my lentils so instead of my recipe having one and a half cups of rice and two and a quarter cups of broth I actually have one and a half cups of rice and then a half cup of all this lentils and stuff so I have to do the math for the rest of the broth so I added water so just to know again I have to eat everything preservative free and all that kind of whatnot don't go paying ridiculous prices for the organic all that blah 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 stuff in the health section the no-name stuff it doesn't have any preservatives in it. It doesn't have anything at all. And the vegetable broth is just... However, the chicken broth does have a 25% less sodium option in the no-name. So, and they usually are on sale for like six for six bucks. So they're like a dollar each. They don't go bad. I mean, they do after a while, but you can keep them quite a while. And once it's open, it can stay in the fridge for two weeks. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be using the rest of it for the next two weeks. So, I'm going to freeze it. And, like everything, I write what it is and the date I put it in there. Just so that I don't forget. I forget too much stuff. And then for the rest of my lentil stuff, I mean, I know what's in there, but I'm still writing it anyway. The date doesn't have much to do with it. And again, Dollarama to the rescue. This is just one of those Dollarama, you know. It was $1.50, I think, for this container. My broth and water mix is ready because that's going to cook for an hour. This takes about half an hour though. Like it needs to warm up until the 20 minutes. So I do have a timer going on for that. So as soon as my timer goes off, I will make this cooking and they should be done at the same time. We'll see each other then. All right, so my timer has rung. So I just mixed my broth in water. It's mostly broth, but a little bit of water in there too and stirred it all up. This little thing comes with it. And this is what I love about rice cookers. I've tried to cook rice, because I can't have minute rice, okay? That's not good for my diet. So a rice cooker is the best idea. You put the cover on, and then you cook. If y'all knew how many times I forgot to click that button on cook. <laughs> all right, we all have figured out that, um, I'm forgetful. Okay, so the meat and veggies has dinged. I've been cooked. Oh, I'm so technical, aren't I? Um, been, been cooked for about 10 minutes now. Uh, so I did stir everything up in. Ta da! See what it looks like. And I did check to make sure everything was cooked. It was. And when you take the rice out, you stir it. Then you let it sit for about five minutes. And voila, you have a meal. Now, I happen to really, really, really like rice. I really, really like rice, okay? So, I am going to just make a plate. And the rest, again, we have enough rice to make one leftover for tomorrow or the day after. And then another one that I can freeze for another day. But, if you happen to have a family, or more than one person to feed, or a growing child that's hungry, or, you know whatever, someone likes to eat a lot, then it might just be fine. I don't know. Personally, for me, it makes supper tonight, tomorrow, and then some. All right, so here's my plate. Um, if there's one thing I hate, it's those um, people that keep trying to sell you on stuff, weight loss, gimmicks, whatever. No, it's a whole lifestyle change. And as you can see, I mean, there's good stuff in there. But I mean, that's a good sized plate. Am I gonna eat it all? Huh? Maybe, but probably not. But I'll get 90%, I don't know, whatever, I'm hungry. My point is, is I don't starve myself. Obviously, I eat. See, I do eat a lot. And I've lost over 100 pounds in 11 months. Just putting it up there. So, that was my whole, I mean, can't wait to go eat. But all of that, that was just my simple recipe, so. 
Thanks, everyone. I hope it's helpful. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Like it, let me know. Um, just, just let me know. All right. Thanks.